Good day, everybody, and welcome to another edition of the Military and Foreign Affairs Network. I am your host, the Voice of Reason. Today, we have entered day 224 of the uh, Russo-Ukrainian War. And uh, we're going to start first down in the Kherson area of operations. It is looking like that the Russians may have, and again, I'm going to say this very carefully, may have... Uh, stopped the uh, current Ukrainian offensive uh, on the western bank of the uh, Dnieper River. Now again, uh, I, I want to take that with an air of caution. Obviously the Ukrainians are continuing operations. Uh, we are seeing a, a reduction, or at least a reported reduction, in Ukrainian maneuver warfare, and uh, we're starting to see uh, uh, heavy artillery exchanges uh, commencing a, again. And uh, obviously the Ukrainians are deploying those uh, those HIMARS and those systems are incredibly effective. The uh, I've seen some of the comment sections talk about uh, the, the effectiveness of HIMARS or possibly the lack of effectiveness. We've seen the Russian side kind of downplay the effectiveness of the of the HIMARS, but uh, needless to say, it is a very effective and terrifying uh, instrument of war. Uh, the the big issue with the HIMARS is one, obviously, it's it's range. It can hit targets uh, in excess of, of 50 miles behind enemy lines, and uh, it can deliver a, a fairly large 227 millimeter, uh, a very uh, precise guided rocket onto target. Uh, carrying a uh, fairly uh, large, heavy, uh, explosive payload. But what makes the, the HIMARS uh, really scary is you do not hear it coming. And it, unlike traditional uh, artillery uh, that uh, at times may not be GPS-aided and uh, in terms of, of, of indirect fire support, uh, there are times where uh, obviously, it is not always that accurate. So you know you're kind of coming under an artillery attack. With the HIMARS, you never hear, see anything. You just you just die in place. And that's how precise it is. It, it, it will hit your location within three to seven meters. And given the size of the warhead and the speed of the warhead, I mean, traveling two times, three times the speed of sound, you just never hear it. You don't hear this incoming uh, uh, munition. Your position just explodes and you die, and that's the that's the end of it. You don't even know what hits you. So uh, it's, again, kind of like a uh, the, the sniper's version, the artillery version of, uh, of a sniper. You just you you don't see it, you don't hear it. Your position is just is just killed, and that's what makes it so frightening. And the Ukrainians have them; they're using them, and they're con continuing to get more from the United States and uh, and NATO partners. And it is a tremendous thorn in the side of uh, Russian forces, where you had rear area forces at one time were still threatened still could be hit, but not like what we're seeing with the use of, uh, of HIMARS and some of these more uh, advanced uh, precision-guided rocketry systems. And the Russians have them as well. The Russians uh, have the ability to deploy very, very similar systems, right? The Iskander, while much bigger, still same, same concept. Uh, you don't hear it coming. There's just a massive detonation on your position and you cease to exist. You're, you're quite literally vaporized. But uh, the, uh, the fighting continues uh, in the, uh, the, the western bank of the, uh, of the Dnieper River. And again, right now, uh, it may be, it may be, we may be seeing that the Ukrainians are running out of steam in this area. We, we have reports, uh, and this is from the Ukrainian side as well, that they have taken a lot of casualties in this operation. Uh, near uh, uh, on in 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 Kherson, and uh, if you if you look at the terrain, we'll we'll pull up the terrain feature here real quick where you can see it again. Very open 
spaces. Open fields. I mean, this area looks a lot like Kansas or, uh, or, or maybe like western Nebraska uh, here in the States. Again, very, very open. And, uh, and obviously, uh, both good and bad tank terrain. Obviously, with in the age of, of the fire and forget anti-tank guided weapon system with ranges of 2,000, 3,000, 4,000 kilometers, it can be very difficult for tanks, especially if, if two infantry, two infantrymen operating a anti-tank guided weapon system can uh, pluck off tanks at, at, at major, major distances. So again, uh, just the, this, this new age of war and then throw in the whole uh, issue of drones and very, very difficult environment to fight in. And I think we're starting to see some of these losses accumulate by Ukrainian forces as they uh, try to press this offensive uh, against Russian forces. And again, we know this is a crucial, crucial uh, piece of land that the Russians are trying to hold on to. Uh, additionally, uh, in the west, I'm sorry, in the east, we continue to see uh, Ukrainian forces try to push uh, what would ultimately be a directional attack to kind of to, towards from the uh, northwest of uh, Severodonetsk and uh, threaten both Lysychansk and Severodonetsk. So it looks like they're attempting to sever uh, this main route, it's the P-66. They've done it, the, the Ukrainians have done it up here in the north. And uh, it looks like they're trying to progress down this P-66 and then eventually uh, launch an attack towards Severodonetsk uh, on the opposite uh, side of some of these uh, river features. And then one other thing I wanted to note that we're hearing as well Looks like the Russians are starting to deploy the uh, Su-57 uh, more. Uh, we have a report that up to four uh, Su-57s were involved in a suppression of enemy air defense operations against Ukrainian forces recently. Uh, and uh, it appears that the Russians are now actively deploying the Su-57 in the ongoing operations in Ukraine. Now the question is: Is are they actually going to start attack, uh, attaching targeting pods to this to this aircraft, and uh, and and join the uh, the modern era in terms of uh, air to ground warfare? Difficult to say at this at this point. We know that the uh, Su thirty the Su fifty seven does have the ability uh, and has been seen with targeting pods prior. Now, are they going to be using them? Uh, in this conflict, uh, I would assume so. They, 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 the Russians, would have to come to a quick realization that uh, they are going to have to deploy more accurate and better uh, standoff uh, air-to-ground attack systems uh, if they are going to effectively interdict Ukrainian forces and stay out of uh, Ukrainian uh, air defense range. But uh, we'll see how that uh, ultimately pans out, but that's just something we were hearing. But uh, that's kind of where we set for now. We're watching again what's happening west of the Dnieper River very closely, and, and obviously in the east of in the Donbass area, specifically uh, uh, Luhansk, uh, Donetsk, and uh, this uh, continued area of operation. But anyway, thanks for joining us. We'll have more very very soon, and as always, have a good day.